What is going on guys? Jeff here, Mad Hatter's Reef, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to add saltwater fish to your nano reef tank. Now, we're going to focus primarily on nano reef tanks, but that doesn't necessarily mean that this thought process couldn't be applied to other size aquariums. And before we jump into any of that, if this is your first time being here, this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be in the know every single time that I upload a new video. All right, let's jump into it. So when it comes to adding saltwater fish to a nano reef tank or a larger tank, the most important thing that you need to come to understand is research is hands down the most important thing that you could ever do about setting yourself up for success when it comes to saltwater fish. Now, as far as research goes, obviously just looking at pretty pictures of fish on the internet isn't doing research. There are some things that you want to look for when you are in that information gathering part of planning your reef tank. And we'll get into that as far as what exactly to look for here in a little bit. Now, as far as nano reef tanks go, I have put together two videos, one that has taken a look at fish that are ideal for a 15 gallon tank, as well as a 20 gallon tank. And some of those fish that are in that 20 gallon uh, list are definitely fish I could cross over to a 15 gallon aquarium. So if you want to take a look at those videos, they're available on my YouTube channel. Uh, all you need to do is jump to the main channel, do a little search for either one and they should pop up for you. All right, so you've done your research. What do you do next? Well, you take your research and you put together a rough draft wish list as far as the fish that you are interested in putting into your nano reef tank. So once you have that list put together, and it, it's not ever really going to be in its final form, uh, you're going to take that wish list and then turn it into a stocking plan. And that stocking plan is the playbook for adding fish to your aquarium. You're going to have a sequence and way in which that you're adding these fish to give them the best chance possible to thrive in your aquarium. So that's a breakdown on what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. So let's jump into the research phase of adding saltwater fish to your aquarium. One spot you can do a ton of research is on the Mad Hatter Reef YouTube channel. Uh, there's quite a few top tens there. Just going to say, shameless plug. Another great place to do some research is liveaquara.com. So here we are over at liveaquara.com. And if you click on the marine fish section, let's say you want to take a look at nano saltwater fish. They're going to give you a whole list of things to take a look at. And let's say the exquisite firefish catches your eye. Now, obviously, they're a business and they're trying to sell fish, uh, but they have some really useful information, one of which is the quick stat. So they'll talk about care level, temperament, diet, whether they're reef safe or not, their max size, minimum tank size, and they also have this section with a compatibility chart, which if you click on the link on the chart, it'll bring you to a page that'll show you a breakdown of fish that are going to work together and ones that are not going to work together. Great information over there. Check it out, Live Aquara. So once you have done your research, outside of just looking at pretty pictures of fish, it's time to start working on your rough draft of your wish list. Now let's take a look at some fish that you might want to put on a list for a 15-gallon nano reef tank. So you kick off the list with a clownfish, then you add a neon goby, a possum wrasse, and then a tailspot blenny. Now, as far as a rough draft on a wish list, this isn't a bad list. This is actually a pretty decent list. Now, are you going to be able to put all of these fish into a 15-gallon nano reef tank? I think it's doable, but it's going to depend on you and your ability to do maintenance and also the filtration of the aquarium that you have it in. Now, don't stop watching right now, run off and be like, well, Jeff said I can put four fish in a 15-gallon tank. There's going to be a level of maintenance that is required to maintain those four fish. So if you're going to be a little bit of a slacker and not stay up on your water changes and not take care of your filtration of the aquarium, you're not going to have success. And the important thing to remember here is an aquarium is a closed box. Everything that you put into that aquarium stays in that aquarium unless you take it out. So if you put a ton of fish in an aquarium, overstock it essentially, and the bio load is too much for the filtration to keep up, and you're not doing water changes, those animals are going to suffer because of it. And in my opinion, you know, the old adage of uh, inches per gallon 
doesn't really apply. It really matters, you know, the amount of fish that you put in there and the amount of work that you're willing to do to maintain it. So bringing it back to our 15 gallon reef tank where we were looking at a wish list that consisted of a clownfish, neon goby, possum wrasse, and a tail spot blenny. I think that a good starting place with this wish list is to go with three fish and then see how it goes, you know, through testing and making sure that you're not overloading the system from a bio load standpoint. And maybe down the road you add the fourth. So if I was going to take a, another look at this list, I'm probably going to go with the clownfish the neon goby and then the tail spot i'm going to put the wrasse on the back burner for now one they usually eat a lot of pods and other things so your microfauna levels need to be kind of built up in the system so if you were going to go with the four maybe down the road it's a better idea to add that one uh, after you kind of know that your system is going to be able to maintain the three so the reason that I went with these three is one, I have a hard time imagining a reef tank without a clownfish. I, I don't know if I ever will or even would have a tank without one. As far as the clownfish that I would select for a smaller tank, I probably would go with one of the more expensive designer ones, like a storm, really into the storms as of late. And that, that's probably what I would do with that. Whether it's one or two, um, I, you know, I probably would just put one because that's going to afford you to have a little bit more fish in there. And there's probably not going to be as much aggression as if you were to add the two. Now, as far as the neon goby goes, they are a relatively small fish. So it's one of those ones that you can kind of just slip in there. I really like the gold bar neon gobies uh, currently. And they do serve a purpose in the sense that they're not going to like eat algae or anything like that, but they are considered a cleaner fish. And in the event that there is some type of, you know, cleaning that needs to happen with the fish, they're going to help out with that. And with the uh, tail spot, you know, they're going to not do a tremendous amount, but they are going to eat uh, a little bit of the algae that's going to grow in the rock. So they do serve a purpose as far as algae consumption in a smaller tank. And that's why I went with these three fish. All right, so we have our three fish on our final draft of the wish list. So let's now turn it into a stocking plan for our 15-gallon nano reef tank. So the first fish on the list was the clownfish. And when we were doing our research, we found that the temperament of this fish was peaceful. Uh, there is one uh, caveat to that, which we'll get into here in a little bit more detail. Uh, they also grow upwards of three inches. So as far as a fish going into a nano reef tank, this is a larger fish. Now, as far as the temperament goes, clownfish are peaceful, but they're also not peaceful. And the reason that I say that is because the breeding habits of this fish kind of dictate its attitude to a degree. All clownfish, when they're born, are male. And only when you put two together and there's the more aggressive of the two, one will become female. So they actually have to squabble a little bit to figure out who's who. And also when they start to breed, uh, that can also change their behavior quite a bit. They can get a little territorial. So those are things to consider with the clownfish when you are going to be stalking them into a smaller aquarium. So with this stalking plan, we were only planning on putting one clownfish in there. So we're not really going to deal with that to the full effect. It might get confused to think that one of the other fish um, potentially is a male, but that's, that's a whole different story going on there. So next up during the research phase, we found that the neon gobies temperament was also peaceful and they grow upwards of two inches. Now this is another fish that also deserves a side note on the temperament side of things. Uh, as far as, you know, peaceful, sure, most of the time, uh, the only really aggression that you're ever going to see from this fish is if you have two of the same type in a relatively small aquarium. If you have a larger aquarium, you usually can get away with having multiples, but definitely want to be careful with adding more than one of these guys to a small aquarium. And the last fish on a wish list was the tail spot blenny. These guys peaceful in their temperament and grow upwards of two and a half inches. So now that we've done our research, we have a little bit of information on all of these fish. We're going to take the information that we have and then turn it into a plan as in which we are going to add these fish to the tank. Yes, you could go out and buy all of those fish and throw them in the tank at one time. It would be a little stressful on the biological filtration of the tank, and you're going to be adding a lot of bio load all in one shot. So it's definitely better to take your time and go a little bit slower. What I would do is I'd add one fish 
you know, once the tank is fully cycled, then maybe two weeks later add another one, and then two weeks later add another one. And really what this is going to do is you can also work this stocking plan into a quarantine plan, and that way you know your fish are incredibly healthy. Quarantining is outside the scope of this video, but we will be making videos on that here pretty soon on the channel as well. So when you take all your information that you have collected during the research phase and you zoom out, you see that the clown fish grows upwards of three inches and is considered peaceful for the most part. Your tail spot grows upwards of two and a half inches, peaceful for the most part. And then your neon goby is considered peaceful and grows upwards of two inches. So when you take all this information and you want to take the list of fish that you have and turn it into a stocking plan, what you do is you simply take the smallest, most peaceful fish, you add them to the tank first, and then you work your way up the chain to those larger, more semi-aggressive fish. What you're doing here is you're allowing the smaller, more peaceful fish to set up shop first and get more well-established. Then you're adding in the somewhat more aggressive larger species of saltwater fish and generally when you add in the more aggressive fish later on they generally accept who is already in the tank and you may find that in a situation where you add peaceful fish down the road they're not going to have as good of a shot as if they were added to the tank first so with all that information at our fingertips we are now going to take our wish list and turn it into a stocking plan and we have found that the neon goby is probably the best fish to add first then the tail spot, and then lastly, the clown. So with all this information, now it's time to get your fish, get them into quarantine, and then stock your tank based off your stocking plan. And that is how you add saltwater fish successfully to a nano reef tank. If you want to learn more about saltwater tanks and how to maintain them and be successful with them, check this video out. I will see you over there.